Help, I'm a prisoner in the library. Chapter 6. We weren't dead. What does she mean we've come to life? Joe Beth demanded. We weren't dead. It must be these clothes. I guess it was a shock waking up and seeing us dressed like this. After not expecting to see anybody in the house at all, Mary Rose explained. I bet she tripped over this little iron cat. See, it's over on its side. Like the one near the fireplace? Just got excited when the lights went out. Mary Rose went on trying to figure out what had happened and forgot this little statue was here. That's when she fell and hurt herself. And that was the bump and the moaning we heard. Mary Rose concluded triumphantly. And then she fainted. I wonder if she hit her head. Well, what do we do now? Mary Rose was already doing it. Her searching fingers moved gently. She did hit her head, Jobeth. She's got a big lump back here. Her right hand looks funny, too, Jobeth reported. It's all swollen. She repeated her question. What do we do now? Do you remember when Daddy fell down the steps and twisted his ankle? He was knocked out, too, Jobeth nodded. Of course she remembered. Their mother had covered their father with a blanket and had warned them not to, to try to move him in case he's hurt his back. Never move an unconscious person, their mother had told them. And she put an ice pack on his leg to keep the spelling down. <clears throat> See if there's a bathroom or a kitchen through that door, Mary Rose instructed. Not me, Joe Beth said promptly. I'm not going to any old dark room. Not me. There's plenty of light from the fire. Sure, in here. Why don't you go? Joe Beth asked. You'd think they were at home the way Mary Rose was ordering her to do this and do that. While she was thinking, Joe Beth looked around the room. Finally, her eyes rested on the silver candlestick. Of course, it was just the thing. She ran over to the candle and picked it up. We can light this, Mary Rose, she said eagerly. It's such a big candle, it'll burn for a long time. Are you crazy? Mary Rose gasped. You're not supposed to light that kind of candle. That's just for show, like the one Grandma Jenny has on the dining room table. And I'm going to see what's in there. You can stay here till I come back. At that moment, Vilmore Fenton groaned. Well, I'm coming with you, Joe Beth said hastily. Together, the girls started to explore the room beyond the door. It's a kitchen, Joe Beth said, surprised. I didn't know they had kitchens in a library. Well, this isn't like a real library, Mary Rose decided. Start looking through those drawers, Joe Beth, and see if there's any candles and matches around. Joe Beth thought it was kind of fun poking through the cabinets. Hey, I found a candlestick. Wait a minute, here's another one. And I found candles and matches, Mary Rose said. Lighting two candles, Mary Rose fitted them into the candlesticks carefully and then placed them on the table. Now what are you doing, Joe Beth asked, as her sister began searching through the cabinets again. I'm looking for plastic bags. Plastic bags? Joe Beth repeated blankly. Plastic bags? For what? Mary Rose didn't answer. She had found what she was looking for and was already opening a small freezer door at the top of the refrigerator. She moved a tray of ice cubes. Some of the cubes fell on the floor when she began to pour them into two of the bags. That librarian is sure going to love the way you're making a mess of our kitchen. Still, Mary Rose didn't reply. When the bags were very were fairly full, she tied them with two of the wire loops that were in the box with the bags. You've made an ice pack, Joe Beth said. Sometimes you're real smart, Mary Rose. Well, I am ten, Mary Rose said kindly. Now let's go back in and put one bag under her head and one on her arm. You bring the candlesticks. Mary Rose went out of the kitchen quickly, with Joe Beth following, holding her candlesticks with her arms outstretched. Mary Rose lifted Vilmore Fenton's head gently and put the bag at the base of her neck, and then she placed the librarian's arm on the second pack. <clears throat> Come on, she told her sister, taking one of the candles. Where are we going now? We have to find something to cover her with, Mary Rose explained. She has to be kept warm. I wish she'd move. Joe Beth looked down at the silent form on the floor. It's so creepy. I know she isn't exactly dead, but she isn't exactly alive either. Make sure you hold the candle way out in front of you so your clothes don't catch on fire. The two girls walked across the room and back into the hallway. The minor bird, who had fallen asleep, now woke up and called after them in an anxious voice. Say, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Joe Beth repeated rapidly. Who are we supposed to say how do you do to? She opened a door and held the candlestick high. I found the bathroom. Never mind the bathroom. Here's your bedroom. Help me pull the spread off the bed, Joe Beth. You better take the blankets, too. The girls went back along the hallway, <clears throat> dragging their treasures behind them. Watch your arm. Watch your head, Mary Rose directed, as the two girls wrapped Miss Fenton's body, 
piling the blankets and the heavy bed spread on top of her, carefully tucking them in at her sides. There, that will keep her good and warm. Is it almost morning? I'm getting awfully tired. Mary Rose looked at her watch and couldn't believe what she saw. She shook the watch and then held it up against her ear. Has your watch stopped? No, it's still going, but it says seven o'clock. That can't be right. Is it seven o'clock tomorrow morning already, or is it seven o'clock tonight? In a place as strange as this, Jo Beth wouldn't be surprised if time ran on a different schedule. We've only been here two hours. You mean we've still got another whole long night before morning? Jo Beth wanted to cry. Not another whole long night. It's not another one. It's the same one. She had a sudden thought. You know what, Jo Beth? Let's go see what's in the refrigerator. Jo Beth was cheerful as soon as she took the bite, first bite of chicken. This is real good. Do you think she'll be mad, us eating up her food? With the power off, the food would spoil anyway, Mary Rose said practically. It would be a shame to have to throw good food away. She helped herself to a generous portion of potato salad. In the other room, meanwhile, Vilmore Fenton's eyes were now open. She had come swimming up out of her inner darkness, telling herself she had had a nice nightmare. Why else would she feel that she was freezing and burning at the same time? Someone had put piles of stones on her body, she had thought before she opened her eyes. Heavy stones, because she could not move. Now fully awake, she realized that she was weighted down with blankets and her bedspread. She sat up shakily, pushing the covers off with her good right hand. She reached around and touched the bump on the back of her head. The pain made her, made her take away her hand quickly. Looking down at the floor, she saw the bag of ice cubes on which her arm had rested. Ice packs. No wonder her head and arm were numb with cold. Fillmore! Yoo-hoo! Fillmore! The mighty board greeted her. What's your name, child? Oh, go to sleep, Miss Fenton said in a cross voice. The sound of her voice brought the girls from the kitchen quickly. When Miss Fenton turned around ever so slowly so that her head wouldn't fall off, Mary Rose and Jo Beth were standing in the doorway, clutching half-eaten chicken legs and staring at her with wide, interested eyes.